So it's Valentine's Day, and to celebrate this day filled with love, I wanted to see if I could beat Castle Crashers using only my kindness. Probably the friendliest challenge run I'll ever do. So getting straight into this run, and just like any Magic Orny run, the beginning is gonna be a pain. With the Barbarians having 50 HP and our Splash Magic hitting twice for one damage, it means it's gonna take about 25 casts of magic her enemy. Uh, the price you pay for love. But up ahead, we did find a Grey Knight who must have been rejected for Valentine's Day. But that's great for us since he was doing quite a bit of damage. Upon leaving this area, we did get 6 skill points that we put all into magic. This will give us a big boost to our damage as well as unlocking our projectile magic. So with the first area out the way, we can head to the pet nursery and grab the beholder. This will give us a plus 4 to our magic. We also went and grabbed Hattie's sword for a further plus 3 magic boost. So with all these upgrades, we now had an extra magic to use and did a lot more damage. On top of that, the more you level up your magic, the further the Pink Knight's rainbow goes, which will be great for later bosses. So it didn't take very long until we got to our first boss of the run. For the war machine, we just used the pink knight splash magic, as our rainbow can hit large bosses multiple times. But the only thing that lets pink magic down is the magic bar, as there's a lot of waiting in between attacks. But for a boss like war machine, this wasn't really an issue since he's pretty easy to avoid. Up ahead, we came across some sleeping barbarians which I made sure to wake up before attacking, as no one wants to drink tea when they're asleep. I wonder how many people will get that reference. Next is the barbarian boss and here we could find the four princesses that were kidnapped earlier. And if I wanted to get a Valentine's Day kiss, here was my opportunity. So I beat the barbarian boss using kindness, which left me with a red princess. So all I had to do was cut her down and get my first Valentine's Day kiss. I said, all I have to do is cut her down until I can get my... So it turns out that the Pink Knight's magic cannot reach the Red Princess. And I'm not going to swim my sword since Pink Knight would never use violence. So, uh, Red Princess, I'm sorry? We'll come back when we got other magic. In these forests, we passed someone who definitely doesn't have a Valentine's Day, as he shouldn't. But we soon came across the third boss of the run who probably should calm down for Valentine's Day. Man, I can only imagine what that school bus is like. Wait, no, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. But after surviving the Baton Star, we did make our way to Catfish, where we learned something pretty important for the run. It turns out that the Pink Knight's projectile magic is a lot better than the Splash magic. It does a lot of damage and uses way less magic than the splash does. So during the damage phase, we threw our projectile magic, but the rainbow was quite useful in between the phases. And after defeating the boss, we had two more skill points, which I put one into magic and one into defense. This unlocked our next ability, which is the elemental infusion, so we can't use it throughout this run. Next was tall grass fields, where we could really see how much magic the rainbow used. But despite that, it was raining during the bear boss fight so the rainbow felt appropriate but after defeating the bear boss we could see two of the princesses and since i hadn't had a valentine's day kiss yet i was pretty desperate to get one wait no not that desperate pp shallow no stop oh thank god the calvary's arrived i'm saved guys uh king well it's his loss time to go collect my loot oh come on Next was Flowery Fields which was actually perfect for Pink Knight since all the enemies were in a line. It ain't much but it's honest work. But the same thing can't be said for Wedding Crash as when I was throwing my plushes at the enemies, they threw bombs back at me, which I didn't really appreciate, but it was nowhere near as bad as the groom who was having a forced marriage on Valentine's Day. Yeah, we'll just put a stop to that right now. Phew, I can finally get my first Valentine's Day kiss. Oh, come on. You cannot kidnap people for Valentine's Day. <sighs> At this point, I'll kiss almost anyone for Valentine's Day. Wait, no, I didn't mean anyone. Wait, no, stop. <sighs> I should be safe in this cave. <sighs> Cyclops, you can't kidnap people for Valentine's Day. Here, man, taste the rainbow. Where does it come from? Well... Honestly, that's understandable. But with the Cyclops defeated, we can now save the Green Princess and finally finally get our first valentine's day kiss in fact now that we've confirmed we can save the green princess let's go back and see if the red princess can be saved too ah uh, th th this is awkward uh i'll come back for you again 
Well, let's not worry about her for now, because we've got another princess that needs saving, as our next level is the industrial castle, which I decided to do before Lava World for a change. I don't know, it just felt right. And fighting our way through industrial castle really wasn't too bad. We had range with the projectile magic for big damage on the small enemies, and the same thing for the beefy. So it didn't take long until we got to the boss fight, which was surprisingly difficult. But by difficult, I mean I just couldn't hit my magic. Yeah, I almost came close to dying a bit too many times. So with the industrial machine destroyed, we could finally rescue our third princess. Oh come on, Valentine's Day isn't that serious guys. Anyway, I let my chat vote on the fate of the industrial prince. And if you've seen any of my other challenge runs, you'll know that my chat have a taste for violence. But I don't know what happened today, love must be in the air since the industrial prince survived. Count your days prince count your days. So with the golden telescope acquired, we could go down to the docks and travel across the ocean. Except we've got to Lava World. Uh... Boss time. So as many of you may know, the volcano boss is a gimmick. That's because you can only defeat him by using the sandwiches, which is pretty violent. But we could technically beat the volcano with love if we throw our projectile magic and immediately eat a sandwich after. The problem is that this takes a long time, and there's a very good chance I could die and have to redo Lava World, which no one wanted. So we did make an exception for the volcano and beat it to a pummel. But hey, who really loves a pile of rocks? And I'm addicted to eating rocks. Ew. Wait, she eats them? There's no way. Oh gosh, that's way worse. What's next? You're gonna tell me someone fell in love with their car? Next was the dragon boss fight, which honestly wasn't that bad. All we had to do was jump and throw our projectile magic, and he went down pretty quickly. So with the golden wheel acquired, we can now finally cross the ocean. By the way, you might start seeing some of these in the top right corner of the screen. Well, I do live stream these runs here on YouTube, and I recently set up alerts, which I kind of regret. Oh, peanut butters. What have you done? Appreciate it, but... Oh, <laughs> oh my god. Oh, uh, so if you'd like to see any of these runs live, then feel free to hop in next time I stream. Not gonna lie though, I only said that so I could avoid talking about the desert. But our next two bosses were the UFOs, and just like any boss that's in the air, all we had to do was jump up and throw our projectile. For the UFO section, the aliens are a one shot, meaning we could shoot our rainbows and anyone that was caught in it would instantly die, which meant that this part was obviously pretty easy. And of course for the escape scene, I pretty much mastered it, so I did it flawlessly. So after the UFO crash, we traveled through the desert and made it to the volleyball game, which was actually quite difficult, since most magics in the game don't actually hit the volleyball, but for whatever reason, the Pink Knight does, meaning I had to try and win the volleyball game using only the Pink Knight's rainbow, which was more difficult than it sounds. So it took a couple of games, but we did eventually win by the skin of our teeth. Now at this point in the run, we had unlocked all the magic for the Pink Knight. So with our newly acquired jump magic, we went back to see if we could save the Red Princess. And well, moment of truth. <laughs> uh, she'll be okay. Next was the marsh where we crossed our no stat insane mode character. We fought some skeletons who had a bit too much calcium and easily beat Troll Mother for the second time. But soon we made it onto the calm boss which was surprisingly easy. Keeping our distance, we could just spam the rainbow attack. And for some reason, the corn didn't react. It didn't even block my damage. And towards the end of the fight, we couldn't actually use the rainbow anymore since it couldn't hit the corn before it went underground. So all we had to do was switch to the projectile magic for the final phase. Next was the Medusa boss fight, which made my chat go wild. And pro tip, don't ask a Castle Crusher player who they'll take for Valentine's Day. You'll get some strange answers. It especially didn't help when Medusa started moaning. Let me love you. Oh god, please don't moan. <laughs> please don't moan, you'll set them off. So we'll just, uh, we'll just skip on past this part. Next was Full Moon, where we had a ladder strat incident. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, they wanted me dead. 
but on the second attempt we actually found out that Pink Knight is really good for ladder strat. By using your rainbow at the top of the ladder, it stays there for a while, hitting the enemies a lot of times. But what Pink Knight isn't great against is the ice barriers. Just like my other magic runs, destroying these things suck. It takes like a full magic bar just to destroy one ice barrier. But it's okay, as at this point in the challenge run, we had a lot of stats into magic, meaning we were hitting the enemies pretty hard. So it didn't take long until we got onto the Frost King boss fight. And yeah, magic's really good against the Frost King. We do a lot of damage, and the Frost King teleporting away actually gives us an opportunity to recharge our magic. On top of that, we could also use our projectile magic in the air. This would keep us above the Frost King and avoid his ice attacks below. So yeah, Frost King was pretty easy. With the Blue Princess, we were luckily able to cut her down with our rainbow and secure our second Valentine's Day kiss. Just don't tell Red Princess. So with 3 out of the 4 princesses saved, we could finally move on to the final part of the game. Now I was a little worried about the cult minions, since they have 100% damage resistance to all elements. And from some of my previous challenge runs, this made the cult minions the worst thing ever. But luckily, Pink Knight's magic isn't an element, so we had no issue here. So the first of the 4 bosses was the painter, who wasn't all that bad. So we simply damaged the painter with our projectile and tanked the painting's damage. And shortly after, the painter was down and we could move on to the Cyclops. Now like the Frost King, we could use our air projectile magic to fly above the Cyclops' attacks. This meant doing damage was extremely easy, but one thing I did struggle with this boss fight was my PB ground strap. Yeah, I think the groom's still salty about the wedding earlier. Our third boss was the necromancer, which I stupidly went into without any healing potions. I'd used them up on the previous two bosses, and I thought I could get away without needing them. It didn't end well. So one shop visit later, and we were on for round two. And for the necromancer fight, well, there's not much to talk about. I didn't really have a strat since all I was doing was spamming my magic and this fight was tough. I just kept getting beat upon by all the enemies at once which drained my health which resulted in me just running around the arena and spamming whatever magic I could. And I actually ended up using all five of my healing potions throughout this second wave of enemies. But I luckily just managed to thin out the enemies on my last potion so I at least had a full health bar for the necromancer fight. But let's be honest. I didn't really need it. Yeah, if you spam magic on the necromancer, it makes the fight trivial. So it turns out that love is really effective against the necromancer. Although not that kind of love necromancer. I'm I'm not into that. So after a lot of magic spam, the necromancer was defeated. Next was the evil wizard who is the final boss of the game. Now I had no healing potions since I used them on the necromancer. But it's okay, because the evil wizard is an extremely easy boss fight. Except he should have been if I knew that the projectile magic for Pink Knight is physical damage. So now knowing this, on our second go around, the bubble phase went extremely fast. For the third wave, some people were worried that I might not be able to do it since the evil wizard floats in the air. But by using my magic jump and then spamming projectile magic, I could actually keep myself above the evil wizard doing constant damage. I was able to repeat this for the fourth and fifth phase, which led me on to the sixth and final phase. For his last phase, the evil wizard likes to move around a lot. This makes it very difficult to hit him with my rainbow. So instead, my main strategy was waiting for the evil wizard to jump up and summon his meteors. I then used my magic jump to gain the same height and throw a projectile magic. This only allowed me to hit the wizard once per jump, but since I was doing 71 damage, it didn't really matter. And with one last jump, the evil wizard was defeated. I landed on the crystal, caught my valentines and rode it all the way back to the castle. And one last kiss to end the run. So that was beating castle crashes using only pink knight magic. Not a very difficult challenge, but it was a valentines day special, so it was never really meant to be. But anyway guys, I hope you all have a very good valentines day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.